Hey guys, Shauna here. I just wanted to pop in and go ahead and give you the intro to today's video. We are headed back to the Houston Zoo today. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit different than our last trip. We have been since they've reopened after um, all of the COVID closures here in Houston. We were fortunate enough to get to go with some cousins and to see all of the changes. So if you wanna check that out, I actually have a video about that on our sister channel at Suitcase Princess, and it's linked on our channel page. Um, but today is gonna to be a little bit different because my husband gets to go, so it's gonna be our unit of four. Um, it should be a little bit easier because some of us know what to expect already, uh, but dad hasn't seen it, so we're gonna take him along. And I'm gonna try to do a better job on this video of narrating what's happening as it's happening instead of kind of trying to pick it up on the backside. But before we get started with that fun stuff, I wanted to pop on before we leave and just give you a little bit of insight. Homeschooling is a great and amazing, wonderful thing that provides you so many opportunities to actually get out and school in the real world. Um, if you went to public school, you're familiar with field trips. They're great. Um, they usually give you some sort of lessons that tie in with the trip that you're gonna take. Homeschooling is no different. Uh, you can do amazing things with homeschool field trips. You can get onto Pinterest and find printables that apply to where you're going. For example, going to the zoo. You can pop over to the zoo when you're studying biology, animal life cycles, uh, habitats, camouflage. There's so many reasons to get out and go to things. Some of the things that we have done, we've actually read books and studied the Statue of Liberty, and we went ahead and did that in anticipation of an upcoming trip. And so we were able to go to New York and visit the Statue of Liberty. And then it was actually a layover on our way to Paris where we were able to see the Eiffel Tower and the, the model made that is on display in the city of Paris as well. So we were able to see uh, kind of both sides of that and to, to rope that into what we're learning. And roping in is what I wanna talk about today. So what I wanna talk about is how Honestly, as a parent, your job is always to educate. My husband and I have always taken this very seriously, even before we chose to homeschool. Anywhere we go, there is a learning opportunity. There's a learning opportunity in everything that we do. We have always been lifelong avid learners and readers ourselves. We find a lot of interest in things and love to follow up on that. And we've translated that over to our parenting. I firmly believe even if our kids went to a traditional you know, all day public school that we would still be supplementing the things that they were learning with extra things at home, including field trips, uh, workbooks, videos, books, just expanding on the things that they're learning, especially the things that they're interested in, because that's the easiest way to get kids to learn is if you can really expand the things that they already have an interest in. Our oldest daughter is very interested in science and space. Conveniently, American Girl had the Girl of the Year 2018 Luciana Vega come out. And so we have really fed into that uh, space interest and she's taken it quite far telescope, star charts, and she has a very large interest, and we're happy to foster that. I just wanna point out that homeschooling is not something that you know you do for your school hours part of time. Homeschooling, and everyone's a homeschooler if you follow my definition here, you're schooling your children all the time. You're a parent, your job is to educate them. So everywhere we go is a homeschool field trip. They're gonna learn something. Everything you do is school time, is learning time. It doesn't have to fit into those boxes. The freedom of homeschool is that you can conveniently, creatively school in any way that you see fit or that you need to, to get these messages across to your kids. So when I take my kids somewhere, I'm asking those open-ended questions. I'm asking them to use their brain. I'm asking them to use things that they've learned. One of my eldest daughter's favorite things to do when we visit the Houston Museum of Natural Science and we go into the Hall of Paleontology is to point out which dinosaur fossils are authentic and which ones are replicas. She learned how to do this uh, from a docent there at the museum and this is her favorite thing to do. And if you ask my dad, he'll tell you that he learned a lot when he goes with us to the museum as well, because she is happy to share that information with everyone that she can. 
So as a homeschooling parent, secular, non-secular, whatever, I'm going to recommend that you take homeschool field trips. And remember that as a parent, you are always a homeschooler because you are always working to educate your children and to enlighten them. Everything you do is a homeschool field trip. It doesn't have to have a curriculum. It doesn't have to have a plan. There doesn't need to be a follow-up lesson or a worksheet. Ask some open-ended questions, encourage them to think for themselves and to you know, read appropriate signage where you're going. They will definitely learn and retain something. If you make it fun, learning is much easier. Here, tell me about your scavenger hunt. I made mommy, daddy, and Mel on a scavenger hunt. So I made one of my own. And they're gonna try to find out where they all are. And then at the end, I'm gonna cut out trophies for everybody. Are you excited? Yeah, and I'm super excited because I'm gonna test you. Okay, so as I said earlier, we're headed into the Houston Zoo. This is a big deal because we have dad with us. I would like to point out that it is 92 degrees. Luckily, it is a mild amount of humidity, but it is really hot, especially for face covering. one direction flow for visitors. So there's a lot of stuff that's actually closed. The entire like bird area is blocked off and unavailable, as well as the tropical bird house. And it looks like the entire monkey exhibit. Is it dragons? Yes. Oh, there's so many. Oh, I see them. Maybe they're tadpoles. Maybe, or minnows. What are minnows? Tiny fish. Oh, what? Dragons. Dragons. Are dragons real? Yeah. Yeah, sure, okay. okay before the closure, the dragons exhibit actually opened up over spring break and was a special added ticket. But now that they're doing the specific one-way uh, walk, is included, which is nice. Scales of a pangolin. I told you it was like a pangolin. What is that? That's a dragon's eye. Yeah, because it has dragon in the name. Yeah. Let's see, it says, does the Arctic dragon remind you of any other animal? Um, a reindeer. Yeah. <laughs> a reindeer, that's exactly right. A snow dragon. A snow dragon. That one's a basilisk. Basilisk. Where do you know a basilisk from? Um, a snake. The Komodo dragon and the dragonfly are not real dragons and don't, they're not really dragons, but they're real things in the water. Yes, they're real. That reminds me of the dragon, but so has wings. Yeah, which one's male? That one. You think so? Wait, that one's male. Sorry, I get confused. Which one's female? That one. How do we know? Because a um, male has the big name. Do you remember what giraffes and humans have in common? Mammals. Yes, both mammals. That's good. What is special about the ostrich? Um, it is, it does not swim and it doesn't fly. What else? It runs. It does run very fast. What is that word? Zoo. Zoo. Good girl. Okay, let's think this through. If there's a baby on the back. There's a baby on the back. So is it a him? Um, no. No. I got it right. Okay. So now we are heading out. You can pass the Natural Encounters building. 
Uh, and there used to be a walkthrough with red pandas and before that koalas, but that entire building is actually gone now. I'm gonna flip you around. So this is the new exit. You come over here and instead of going up under the same awning as the entrance like you used to do, you now come up here. There's kind of like a dead end into the gift shop. They've made a photo pickup kiosk there and you right turn, you can return all your strollers and wagons and ECBs. You come up here and there are restrooms and you actually exit through this side gate that used to be kind of stuck back in a little nook. Okay, so that was our trip to the Houston Zoo. Uh, some of our second trips after reopening. Just remember that when you homeschool, uh, everywhere you go is a homeschool field trip. Every time you talk with your kids is an opportunity for them to learn. Is there anything you learned today? Um, lots of things. Um, like, um, I learned that mommy and daddy are way smarter than I thought they were. <laughs> the hunt. And I learned about animals too. Yeah. Like you, and, mommy oh. asked me the question about what do um, giraffes have in common? And it was about their neck. They have the same the same number, but their bones are just way bigger. And that they're that we're all mammals. Yeah. Okay, I learned that this girl is made for zoo openings and not zoo closings, especially in the summer. Marilyn, did you learn anything? No. Okay. <laughs> so if you found anything today informative or entertaining, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, and turn on notifications so you can be some of the first people up to know when we have a new posting. Thanks so much for coming along on our trip to the Houston Zoo. If you would like to see more travel related content or homeschool field trips or things where we get ourselves out of the house, please head over to our sister channel, Suitcase Princess. Thanks.